Welcome to the Dog On It Trucking Podcast, where I get to interview some of the leading influencers in trucking. Today's guest, I'm so excited and happy that Heather Fry of Truckers Against Trafficking agreed to appear on the show. I feel it is a hugely important topic. I get to chat with Heather today. Heather Fry is the Canadian Director for Truckers Against Traffic. This a 501c3 that exists to educate, equip, empower, and mobilize the trucking, bus, and energy industries to combat human trafficking as part of the regular jobs. Founder and former Executive Director of Impact Orphans, Heather has been working on behalf of the vulnerable and exploited for over a decade. Uh, with that, please welcome Heather Fry of Truckers Against Trafficking. Hi, Heather. How are you? Great, Chris. Good to see you. It's great to see you again. The last time we spoke, I saw you here in Canada at the TTSAO convention. Is that it? That's right. Yeah. And then you went to another meeting later that evening, did you not? Yeah, there was a great dinner uh, for Truck World um, that I was able to attend that night, advertising Truck World, and um, looks like it's going to be a great event. Well, good. Heather, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you get involved with TAT, T-A-T? Yeah, Truckers Against Trafficking, TAT. Um, well, I got involved just recently. Uh, Truckers Against Trafficking has been around in the U.S. for about 10 years and they wanted to replicate the pro program in Canada. So I was brought on at the end of 2019 and we launched in October. Um, a little bit about my background, I um, just have always had a heart for kids in the foster care system. And in fact, uh, I have five children, two of uh, which were adopted out of foster care. And I worked really closely, um, one of my prior jobs, uh, I worked very closely with foster children who were emancipating out of the system. So these are kids who had been in foster care and never got adopted. And um, what I realized about them is that they were very vulnerable to being trafficked into the sex trade in particular. And um, I was really concerned about that. Um, they're very vulnerable. They're among the most vulnerable populations, along with homeless youth, um, runaways, LGBTQ, anyone that's coming from a broken home. And so the job opportunity presented itself, and here I am. That's awesome. I didn't realize, I mean, I've met you uh, two or three times. You spoke at uh, another meeting that I was at, and... I didn't realize that you were a mother of uh, two foster kids. Yes. Uh, that takes yep. a great deal of courage, I think. So. Yeah. I, I just think that's pretty neat. So, uh, TAT, Truckers Against um, Trafficking, is this just a female problem? No, not at all. Uh, you know, young men and women are at risk. This is not just about uh, youth and it's uh, not just about women. Uh, there are very many populations that are vulnerable. Typically the highest percentage, uh, they are women or girls, uh, but, but boys and young men are also vulnerable. Yeah, and that was one of the things I'd forgotten about when I heard you speak earlier, was that it's not just about women. Uh, one of the other takeaways I had from uh, hearing you speak is the language that we use. Um, for instance, if I said to you, oh, she's just a prostitute, what would your reaction be? How do you know she's just a prostitute? Uh, you know, there are people who are being forced and coerced into prostitution. They are not there. Many, if not most of them, are not there of their own free will, prostituting themselves. They are there under the control of a third party, and uh, they may look like they're willing, they may look like they're eager, but the tactics that traffickers use to keep their victims under their control 
Um, oftentimes they are um, deeply psychological as well as violent. And so, um, you know, the term lot lizard, um, we want uh, people in the truck driving community to take a second look at using that term because the person that they may be calling a lot lizard, the person that they're looking at as a prostitute, as just a prostitute, um, may be a victim of human trafficking. Yeah, and it was that piece of language that I took away, I think, in your first talk, was, you know, if I say she's just a prostitute, it's demoralizing, it's, in, it's not treating her as a human. And, you know, when I think, but for the grace of God, my daughter is not involved in that, um, but she could have been quite easily. So, you know, I just, that was a big takeaway for me is that we must change our language and in in how we refer to other humans. Well, and you know, not just our language, but the way that we think about these people, because I can tell you what, traffickers, pimps, are counting on us thinking that, oh, that's just a prostitute and that will turn a blind eye away from what we're seeing rather than reporting what is going on. So. Yeah, I think that's a great segue into Truckers Against Trafficking. If I'm a truck driver and what, what, what would you encourage me to do uh, if I see something, you know, unfortunately a lot of truck stops are used for this type of activity. Right. Yeah, so our program is simple. We're going into the trucking industry and we're training uh, drivers in particular on how to recognize signs of human trafficking. We have a training video and we have a wallet card. This is our wallet card right here and uh, it has ways that you can recognize signs of human trafficking, questions to ask. Um, it also has the human trafficking hotline numbers on there. Our ask is that if they see something uh, suspicious, our ask is simple, make a phone call. So if there's something, if there's imminent danger, of course, call 911 first. But secondly, call the human trafficking hotline. The, the Canadian Human Trafficking Hotline is set up to answer any sort of questions that a truck driver might have. Um, so if they're just seeing something specific, uh, suspicious and there's no imminent danger, call the trafficking hotline. They'll talk you through, um, they'll ask you questions, and it can be done anonymously and confidentially. At that point, they will make a determination if law enforcement needs to get involved and they're uh, connected to law enforcement and can make a phone call. So the human trafficking hotline number in Canada is 1-833-900-1010. And I know that um, many of the Canadian drivers drive across um, the US border as well. So. If they're in Canada, we would ask that they would call the U.S. Uh, Human Trafficking Hotline. And that number is 1-888-3737-888. Just to be clear, um, I, I think I misheard you. When a driver is in Canada, he calls the Canadian hotline number. And if the driver's in the U.S., even if he's a Canadian driver, he should call the U.S. hotline number. That's correct, because each of the hotlines are connected to local law enforcement. And so it's real important that um, if something is going on, that the correct law enforcement people can get involved right away. Right, that makes sense to me. So just call the hotline number on uh, for the country that you're in at the time. Correct. Now, if I was a truck driver, and hopefully I hear this or see this, and, and I spark some interest, what would I do to get more uh, information? Well, you can um, go on the website uh, to get more information. Our training video is right on there. Uh, the email to contact us would be tat.truckers at gmail.com. And I'll have all this in the show notes below, of course, including the hotline numbers and things. But right. Yes. Did you want to show the um, uh, the website? Yeah, I'd love to do that. And, um, you know, we're going in to companies and we're training drivers within the companies 
through our training video. But if there is an individual driver who is interested in getting TAT trained, they would just go to our website, um, truckersagainsttrafficking.org, and then click right here on Get Certified. That opens up a page where they make a profile and register, and then it comes up with the training video um, and goes over the wallet card. And how long is that training video? The training video is only 26 minutes long. And, and the reason I ask is that uh, I've seen it. And for some people who are born and raised on YouTube, the younger generation than I, they might think that 26 minutes is horrifically long. Oh. I can tell you it is not. It is an unfortunately a an entertaining uh, video uh, I, yeah. I found it quite um, entertaining is not the right word what's well it's perhaps? compelling it's very compelling it's a documentary style training it's not a dry webinar classroom setting type training and so you'll get to hear from an actual survivor and it, it really the 26 minutes flies by because it's a horrific crime um, the stories are horrendous, um, and it's a very well done video. So I hope that people will check it out. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say. It was, it was well done. It is um, engaging, and the time flies when you're watching. Uh, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it is something that is needed because women and, and men are being victimized uh, on a daily basis. Right. Um, do you have a success story that you can share with uh, our listeners and viewers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a 20-year-old woman was kidnapped by family friends out of Iowa. And after about two weeks, um, a uh, law enforcement officer was called onto the scene of a truck stop um, where... Uh, the following story unfolded. So this 20 year old woman had been beaten, raped, tortured. She had been burned with instruments that were heated up on an RV stove. She had been branded on her back and she was being starved by her traffickers, Laura Sorensen and Aldair Hadza. Um, so, a great situation came about. A truck driver happened to be at the truck stop doing his paperwork, sitting at the truck stop doing his paperwork, and he noticed some things. He noticed that there was a man going back and forth between the RV and the convenience store. He also noticed that there were various men who would arrive at the RV, go in, and then leave about 15 or 20 minutes later. Um, he saw this happen several times. He also saw a young woman um, stick her head out of the window only to have it violently snatched back in. At that point, he um, thought something isn't right and he made a phone call. His name was Kevin Kimmel. He drove for a Conway truckload and he's now with CFI. Because Kevin just simply took a second look he took the time to take a look at his surroundings to see what was going on. He had been trained by Truckers Against Trafficking. He knew what to look for, and he made a simple phone call that resulted in law enforcement coming out to the scene, separating this woman from her traffickers, and ultimately um, these two traffickers were arrested and prosecuted of human trafficking. They received 40 and 41 years in prison. Now, this was quite a heroic move on this uh, on Kevin Kimmel's part. The young woman was days away from dying when she went to the doctor um, because of the severe malnutrition and the infections from the burns all over her body. The doctors say that had she not gotten help, that she would have died within a few days. So he took a second look, made a phone call and saved a life. And what scares the bejesus out of me on that story is that at the beginning you said this was a family friend that abducted the girl. Right. Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah. 
uh, who in the heck can we trust? <laughs> but right. why, what would you say to a company if uh, they asked you, why should we get involved in uh, trucking, truckers against, um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> truckers against trucking. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think there are several reasons. Uh, the first that comes to mind is corporate responsibility. It makes good sense as a company to be doing good things, to be socially responsible. Who doesn't want to help in the fight against such a horrific crime? But you know, I'm thinking a little bit more practically after having been at the TTSAO conference where I heard about a Canadian driver shortage and the difficulty of recruiting good team members and maintaining good team members. And so when you think about um, what's going to set your company apart from the next and keep those really good drivers on your team, let's offer them a way that they can be an everyday hero. Let's give them a sense of pride and purpose in their work. And so, you know, many of us, we long to make a difference in this world. We would love for our careers to affect lasting change for the good. Um, but not many of us are in that sort of situation where we can make that happen. But professional truck drivers, are absolutely in that position where they can make a difference and they can be a hero in the life of somebody. And so as a company, um, I, would, I would think that it would make great sense to offer that sort of purpose and pride and you know, be a part of the greater good and uh, perhaps have an everyday hero on your drive team. I think as all companies are striving today to be more um, socially responsible, cut down driver turnover, um, just retain the best of the best by demonstrating that you actually care about our world and you know I'm talking about the environment and other human beings, that would all go a long way. I think that's a great idea uh, for a yeah. vehicle of retention is to show your corporate values on your sleeve and do something about it. Right, our TAT trained drivers are proud to be truckers against trafficking. Yeah, well, and I'm proud to be uh, a part of it. And, and, you know, I'd like to say thank you so much for allowing me to share this message uh, with the audience because I really believe it's important and the work that you are doing and TAT in, in particular are doing is of huge value and it's, and it's necessary, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, thanks, Chris. Thanks for helping us get the word out. Well, it's the least I can do. Um, now, why should we, we, met, we talked briefly about why should um, companies participate? Why should a driver participate? You know, drivers are uniquely positioned to be able to be the eyes and the ears out on the road, and they can be a major asset for law enforcement and help to recover victims and get pimps arrested. Truly, truly, they can make a difference in the fight against human trafficking, and who doesn't want to be a part of that? Uh, I think that's a great idea. And so, um, what is TAT? asking truck drivers to do now if you, if I got properly trained. Right, so um, go through the training. Our ask is simply to make a phone call if you are seeing something. What we don't want them to do, we absolutely do not want them to approach the trafficker and we don't want them to try to recover the victim. That's law enforcement's job. It's a simple ask for us just make a phone call yeah, so you're asking us to simply make a phone call um, which can be anonymous I remember you saying earlier right. so we can do this from the safety of our truck and not really be too involved right the risk is low that's the wording I'm, I'm trying to say because I want to be involved if I have the opportunity to help somebody I should and I would uh, but I can do it anonymously and the risk to me personally is low. Right. Did we cover everything today, Heather, that uh, you wanted to say to our listeners and watchers? 
Yeah, I just think, you know, human trafficking is one of the greatest human rights violations of our time, and we have an opportunity to do something about it. And so I really would hope that uh, companies would reach out and talk about training their drivers and that individuals would simply go to our website and get certified as a trucker against trafficking. I think that's a great way to end this. And Heather, I thank you for all the work that you're doing. I know you live in the States and yet you are the, um, sorry, what's your title? You're the Canadian? I'm the Canada Director of Truckers Against Trafficking. There you go. Because you come up to Canada frequently. Um, yes. Thank God you're from Colorado where you're used to the cold. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I love that I get to come up to Canada. I love that place. <laughs> Well, uh, and we like having you. I, I wish we'd met under different circumstances that um, the need wasn't so great, but unfortunately it is. And I thank you for the awesome work that you do and Pat does. And I'm just trying to help you get the word out. Thanks so much, Chris. I pre appreciate it. Thanks, Heather. And I'd like to thank Heather Fry from Truckers Against Trafficking for her appearance. For those of you who are operating a company and want more information, Heather's contact information is below. Please reach out and get your driver certified. If you are an individual truck driver, you can self-certify by going to the website and that link is also in the show notes. So please, either way, do what you can to fight this horrific crime. That's it for this week, Safety Dogs out.